powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the 5:30 News on Q2, Montana's news leader. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us. I'm Janelle Slade. Well, questions tonight surrounding part of Montana's congressional delegation and potential financial investments surrounding COVID-19. This, as the number of confirmed Montana COVID-19 cases goes up by five, all of those here in Yellowstone and Bighorn counties. And the governor responds to criticism using data to back up his business shutdown and stay-at-home directives. Well, last month, several U.S. senators came under intense scrutiny when it was revealed that they significantly altered their investments after a private January briefing by federal officials on the coming coronavirus crisis. Well, Montana senators were not part of that briefing, but tonight, MTN's Mike Dennison takes a look at the investment actions of Montana's entire congressional delegation and files this report. Republican Senator Steve Dane's office says he's made no stock transactions this year of more than $1,000. And Democratic Senator John Tester's office says he's made no investment changes this year. Most of their transactions must be reported within 30 days of occurring, and neither senator has made any filings this year. Their next personal financial disclosure report is due next month on May 15th. Republican Congressman Greg Gianforte, who's running for governor, has made more than 200 investment transactions this year. But his campaign says Gianforte's wealth is managed through a blind investment agreement, with a manager making the decisions without Gianforte's knowledge or input. Gianforte's transactions included stock purchases of several drug companies that have worked on coronavirus-related projects, such as the Swiss firm Roach Holdings or a Japanese firm Chugai Pharmaceutical. Those buys have prompted political opponents to accuse Gianforte of profiting from the outbreak. The campaign of Montana Attorney General Tim Fox, who's opposing Gianforte in the three-way Republican gubernatorial primary, went so far as to say Gianforte is profiting from insider trading. Gianforte's campaign declined to respond directly to these allegations. Instead, it said he had no prior knowledge of the trades and that there are only 10 transactions out of more than 200 made by his independent investment manager. Those other investment purchases and sales with Gianforte's money ran the gamut in everything from bank stocks to bonds that are helping build a school in Dillon, Montana. Montana's delegation also say they didn't get any detailed briefings on the coronavirus outbreak until late February, well after the meeting that led to the accusations against the other senators. In Helena, I'm Mike Dennison, MTN News. Thanks, Mike. Now, Gene Forte's transaction reports for his investments are filed with the U.S. House Clerk's Office and are available online. Well, Governor Steve Bullock releases a breakdown of COVID-19 cases across Montana as he communicates he's not ready to lift his stay-at-home directive anytime soon. Despite recent criticism from Montana Republican legislative leaders, the governor says what Montana is doing is working. A report from the state shows that travel cases contributed to the majority of the first cases across Montana. The majority of those cases so far, 20% are people ages 20 to 29. The breakdown is showing 50% male and 50% female. And the governor says, we got a head start and what we're doing now will help us open our state sooner. I know that Montanans are hurting and especially financially, but I also don't want to put us in a worse position than we already find ourselves in, in trying to get a hold of this virus. Compared to surrounding states uh, that took lesser actions, we have a significantly lower rate of infection per capita. South Dakota has a rate per capita of about three times what Montana does. Well, Montana Republicans sent a letter to the governor this morning encouraging him to rethink his directives, including lifting restrictions in counties with no COVID-19 cases. Half of Montana counties still do not have a confirmed COVID-19 case. Well, a decision whether students will return to class this year has not been made. Yesterday, Governor Bullock said he wasn't ready to write off the school year just yet. Q2's Russ Riesinger talked to Billing School Superintendent Greg Upham to get his thoughts. And I know it's his decision, not yours, but if it was your decision, uh, what, would you, what would you do at this point? You know, it's, that's a, almost a $64,000 question and walking through it with our people, I think it's in the best interest for us to probably uh, finish the year out in a virtual format to the, to the best of our ability. I, I say that with some reservation. Uh, I like the way the governor referenced the science and data as the guidance in this. And I, I think we have to follow that too, you know, 
Uh, we have 17,000 students in Billings Public Schools with 33, with 33 schools. And so it's difficult um, to uh, keep social distancing in a school. It's almost an oxymoron. So uh, I'm probably leaning more toward let's, let's finish out in this manner and uh, start next fall to the best of our ability. Now, Upham did say that social part of returning to school would be significant for some students and teachers, but the main concern is safety. Ideas are still being considered for this year's graduation, which Upham says will not happen in person during the time frame of this school year. Well, Montana Attorney General Tim Fox was in Billings today to see firsthand how Yellowstone County has focused its resources in response to the coronavirus pandemic. Fox checked out the COVID-19 Incident Command Center in the Stillwater Building downtown and then later toured the county's quarantine facility at Metro Park. Fox tells Q2 News his top priority is slowing the spread of the virus and protecting the safety of the 750 employees under his watch at the Montana Department of Justice. Now, part of that entails looking ahead at uncertain future. Most importantly, though, I've been working with lawmakers, legislators and leaders about what does the future look like and what do we need to do at state government in particular to plan for the likely outcomes on budget and revenue. Uh, what are the new norms going to be? How do we keep people safe and healthy? Tonight at 10, an update from the Attorney General on the state of Montana's legal system slowed to a crawl in the midst of this pandemic. Well, the number of confirmed COVID-19 cases is up by five, all of those right here in our region. The state's latest numbers released at 10 o'clock this morning show 399 cases. Of the five new cases in Montana, four of those are in Yellowstone County, the other in Bighorn County. And the, the state says 197 people have recovered and seven people have died. In Wyoming tonight, there are now 282 confirmed cases. The most cases are in Laramie County at 62. Well, the first wave of stimulus checks has hit the bank accounts of some Montanans. According to the IRS, direct deposits started coming in over the weekend. Under the coronavirus economic relief package, Americans are set to receive up to $1,200 individually or $2,400 for couples making $150,000 or less. Families will also receive $500 per child. Anyone who makes more than $99,000 a year will not receive a stimulus check. If you don't typically file a tax return, you can enter your information on the IRS website. And if you're a taxpayer who doesn't use direct deposit, you'll be able to enter your bank information later this week. Everyone else will have to wait for a paper check, which is expected to take significantly longer. Well, one local Billings restaurant is stepping up with its reduced staff to help get meals to people in need. Last night, staff at Bull Mountain Grill in the Billings Heights packed 100 lunches filled with PB&J sandwiches. Food in the sack lunches was provided by the Billings Food Bank and will be distributed with the help of St. Vincent de Paul. Restaurant manager at Bull Mountain Grill wanted to encourage people to lend a hand right now because the nonprofit organization needs help. Uh, just always are looking for ways to help the community and so actually our landlord was uh, one of the proponents of of helping us get set up with St. Vincent de Paul and just kind of doing what we can to make some sack lunches when we can and take them down and whenever they need some some someone to put together some lunches and bring them down that's what we'd like to do and we just wanted to spread the word to others that if they are looking to help I know that they, they can use help with that. And if you'd like to lend a hand or make a donation, you can reach out to either the Billings Food Bank or St. Vincent de Paul for more information. In other news, what started as a weapons complaint turned into quite the ordeal at a downtown Billings motel yesterday. An update tonight, 33-year-old Scott Takes Enemy was eventually arrested at the Lazy KT Motel just before 5.30 p.m. Monday. Police had blocked off the area around the business at 1401 First Avenue South. A couple of hours into the standoff, police noticed a utility room on the other side of the hotel had been locked and barricaded. Then they noticed the takes enemy was fleeing from that room back up into the attic. Several minutes later, takes enemy either fell through or broke through the ceiling into an occupied hotel room. BPD SWAT forced entry into that room and took takes enemy into custody. The hotel was then completely evacuated and all rooms searched, including the crawl space areas. Well, up next on your Q2 530 News, we take you inside a homegrown business that's helping others with Montana strong t-shirts. And the tale about these grizzly cubs found huddled up together and playing. 
Ed, coming up in weather, well, we're looking at some scattered rain and snow showers in South Central Montana, but it won't be long before all the rain starts changing to all snow. How much snow can South Central and the Billings area get? We'll have the answer coming up. You're watching MTN News with Janelle Slade and Russ Riesinger. Storm Tracker Weather with Bob McGuire and Sports with Scott Breen. This is the 530 News on Q2, Montana's news leader.